Google has once again decided to move the needle in terms of what they want to do with AI by releasing another project that they're working on. And this is a direct competitor to Bing and they are calling it Project Maggie. Now, essentially what Project Maggie is, it's a direct competitor to the chat GPT powered Bing search engine we all know and use. Now, of course, we all know that Google has announced many products, but Google Maggie is essentially going to be powering the new Google search engine, which powers over 8.5 billion searches a day. We know that Google is taking the AI race pretty seriously because they just recently announced that they're deploying over 160 engineers onto Google Maggie. So this means that they are going to be making sure that this new search engine with AI features and personalized results are going to be very competitive. Now remember, this is Google we're talking about. They have a lot of resources. So essentially what this search engine will have is apparently it's going to have some chat GPT like features. So apparently it's going to have a chat interface where it's going to be conversational and adapt to people's questions to be able to allow them to have follow up questions and just create a more personalized experience. Now, we all know that Google has released Bard earlier. We know that this wasn't Google's best accomplishment and we know that this was actually rushed out earlier than it was supposed to leading to a very lackluster launch so i don't think that bard is going to be integrated into this but i'm optimistic with what google is able to do so one thing google does actually have in its favor is that it does actually have the monopoly on search meaning that it is still the number one search powered engine but of course with the new search powered engine called maggie essentially what we're going to have is it says right here that transactions such as purchasing items or booking flights will be directly on Google, leveraging the Google Pay integration and providing users with a personalized product recommendations based on their preferences and search history. Now, what I want to know here is, is this going to be somehow different to ChatGPT's plugin feature, which you can see right here that they recently talked about in a demo in a TED talk. But you can see that ChatGPT is selecting all these different tools without me having to tell it explicitly which ones to use in any situation. And this, I think, shows a new way of thinking about the user interface. Like, we are so used to thinking of, well, we have these apps, we click between them, we copy-paste between them, and usually it's a great experience within an app as long as you kind of know the menus and know all the options. I know you might be thinking, why did I put ChatGPT in there? Well, it's only a visual example of what Google could possibly do when they have their search engine, which is going to be released very, very soon. Now, according to this article right here, apparently Maggie is set to launch in May, which is going to be available to 1 million users in the United States with plans to expand to 30 million users by the end of the year. And they're going to be adding features continually throughout the year all the way until the end of the year. So it definitely shows us that there is still a continual roadmap at Google for them to try and compete with Microsoft's existing integration with ChatGPT and Bing. Now, some of you might be wondering and might be thinking, why are Google racing so quickly to get this released? I mean, they're going to release it literally next month in May, which is only around six or seven days from now. So essentially, a couple of days ago, Alphabet shares fell 4% after Samsung actually considered replacing Google with Bing as its default search engine on its devices because it was scared of its ability to compete in the AI arms race. So essentially, Google was falling behind on the AI race and Samsung was like, you know, I'm not sure if we want to have Google as the primary device for search engines on all of our phones, which is standard on any Android device. So of course, because of this, essentially Google's stock price fell because Samsung still makes up a large part of Google's net revenue. Now you can see right here that an estimated 3 billion in annual revenue was at stake with the Samsung contract. And not only was Samsung at play here, additionally, Apple had a $20 billion deal tied up in a contract that was supposed to be renewed this year. So essentially what this means now is that this makes Bing the most dangerous threat to Google in 25 years. And we could potentially see the rise of software and AI technology being deployed at unprecedented rates, even when they aren't ready for the public, just because they want to be first and they want to do the competition.
Now, you might be wondering what other things has Google released in its AI department because they've actually released some stuff that I haven't managed to cover just yet. But you can take a look at here at Google's Workspace new AI integration, which actually allows for seamless transition between your work and the AI doing a sort of co-pilot collaboration. So essentially, you can see right here, this is Google's new AI workspace. Now, many of you might not use Google Workspace because it's essentially just mainly for companies. I'm not sure if they've rolled this out to the traditional users G email. I think if they did, this would be almost a seamless integration and a lot of people would be glad that this is here because a lot of people do use Gmail. Now, there are some traditional suggestions that do appear when you use Gmail on a standard day-to-day -day basis, but it isn't at this level. Now, I use Google Workspace all the time and I haven't had access to these features, so I'm sure that they're currently being rolled out. But something like this is definitely very similar to Microsoft's Copilot, which was recently announced, which is essentially just an AI tool for pretty much every single Microsoft Workspace. So, you know, Word, PowerPoint, all of that stuff combined into one. We can see here that this definitely looks very reminiscent of Google's, which you're about to see. And of course, Microsoft is analyzing the data with Copilot, definitely gonna help a lot of people out in Excel. But like I said, with Google, what we have right here is the AI software that's enabling people to build these presentations pretty much effortlessly. And I think when it does come to Google rolling out this kind of technology, especially in the browsers, I'm starting to wonder if maybe Google can actually catch up because a lot of this stuff that they are adding to their suites and their softwares does seem progressively more impressive. Now, we do need to talk about a recent announcement at their AI powered maps reveal, where they talked about how AI is going to power the next set of Google Maps. Now, this definitely was a little bit interesting, but many people weren't convinced by Google's efforts to integrate AI into their traditional map software. Here on the left-hand side, you can see how Google is using AI to essentially provide data in real time about what's going on through a sort of Google lens. And although it is interesting, I think with the rate at which AI is evolving and is moving rapidly, many people are just expecting ridiculous levels of technology to be released every single day, which isn't always possible considering that you do want things to be effective. But if I am being honest with you guys, this is definitely less impressive than the chat GPT that we've seen. It uses AI to fuse billions of street view and aerial images to create a rich digital model of the world, letting you truly experience a place before you step inside. Let's take a look at the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. If, you consider a if you're considering a visit, you can virtually soar over the building, finding the entrances, and get a sense of what's in the area. So I know that that might not have been the most impressive display of AI software, but it seems that Google just wants to completely roll this out onto every single piece of software that they have. Now, as for Google Project Maggie, we do have this small demo that I did manage to see on Twitter, but I didn't actually manage to see anything on Google's official release. If you do manage to see it, don't forget to leave a comment down below because I'd love to see Google's official post. I've only seen posts that have been released by news articles and of course, respected journalists. But it's important to note that what you just saw was just a rumored example of what it may look like. I wasn't able to confirm or nor deny if that is exactly what Project Maggie will look like, but I can imagine that it's going to look like a combination between Bard and what Microsoft already has, because remember, Google wants to completely annihilate the competition that is Bing. Right now, even myself, I use Bing on a daily basis because it just has so many features that Google does not. So here's my question to you all. Will you be using Google's Project Maggie when it releases next month, or are you going to be sticking with Bing? And let's just hope for the sake of everyone, Google doesn't completely rush this product, because if they do, I can guarantee that people are going to get the idea that Google makes terrible AI products, and when they release products in the future, they're not even going to want to try them, because they're always going to be considered subpar or second to ChatGPT slash Microsoft's Bing. So they've got a lot of weight on their shoulders and it's going to be very interesting in May.